and get started. Tonight, it is my pleasure to introduce two San Francisco creators, author Bonnie Toy and illustrator Sophie Diao in celebration of their beautiful picture book, Sarah and the Big Wave, the true story of the first woman to surf Mavericks. Joining them in conversation tonight is the woman herself, Sarah Gerhardt. I'm so excited for what you have for us tonight. Um, so I'm going to quickly pass it on to all of you. Thank you and welcome and congratulations on your book. Thank you so much, Hannah. Hi, everyone. And thank you um, to Books, Inc. for hosting us. We're so excited to be here with you to celebrate Sarah and the big wave. And um, that we have the real life Sarah Gerhardt here joining us, me and Sophie. We're fangirling over here. Yeah. And over there. Um, so yeah, thank you, Sarah. Um, I am a journalist and a writer of books, mostly for grownups. Um, this is my first book for kids. And it all came from this magazine story that I wrote um, for California Sunday Magazine about Sarah and these other amazing big wave women as they prepared and trained for a season at Mavericks. Um, and luckily there was an editor in New York who was paying attention named Kate Farrell. Kate, if you're there, thank you for making this dream come true. She asked me if I would ever thought about writing a kid's book and I said, of course. Um, and I got to talk to Sarah a bit more for the book about her life and her story and the amazing Sophie Diao drew the pictures and we have this gorgeous brand new book birthed into the world today um, to share with you. And Sarah's here with us to talk with us about it. Um, so we decided we're gonna start by reading the book to you. And then we're gonna do something really fun, which is I'm gonna ask Sarah a few questions about her amazing surfing life. And while we're doing that, Sophie's gonna do a live drawing um, of our conversation and of Sarah's stories. And at the end, Sophie's gonna make uh, postcard prints of that drawing and send them out to anyone who um, buys a copy of the book tonight or has pre-ordered through the store. And I'll be signing those books tomorrow at Books Inc. Um, and this is to say thank you so much for supporting us and our wonderful independent bookstores. So that really means a lot to us. Um, so I hope there are some kids out there ready for us because we're gonna read. And um, if there are any questions for Sarah, you put them in the Q&A and then we will get to them after we have our chat. So here we go. Sarah and the Big Wave, the true story of the first woman to surf Mavericks. Gotta see that opening page. Amazing. It's a cold, bright February day in California, and Sarah is in the ocean waiting for her big wave. Sarah is a surfer. 2,000 miles away in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, her wave was born in a winter storm. It has taken more than a week for the wave to get from where it began to where Sarah is today, waiting. Storms that form in the North Pacific often follow the jet stream, gathering power and energy as they send high seas straight for the California coast. In a way, Sarah has been waiting all her life for this wave. She began surfing when she was young in California and Hawaii, where she grew up. First, the waves she surfed were little waves. Then she tried medium waves. And then she tried big waves. She found she loved the big ones best. Bigger waves, though, meant bigger breaths when she fell and went underwater. Sometimes the waves held Sarah down for what seemed to be a long time, but she learned to stay calm by counting. One, two, three, four, five, sometimes as long as 45 seconds until she popped up to the surface again. Counting made her realize that she always had more breath than she thought. The North Shore of Oahu is famous for big waves. What's a big wave? Usually it's a wave that's 20, 30, 40, even 50 feet tall or more. A 50 foot wave, that's pretty tall. That's a five story building. Sarah is a little bit scared, but she's also excited. When she started surfing in Hawaii, she was the only girl out there. At first, she didn't have anyone to surf with. The boys didn't want to hang out with her. The girls didn't want to go surf. People told her, girls aren't supposed to be in the water. That didn't stop her. 
Because not many girls were surfing then, she had a hard time finding the right equipment, the right size surfboard, the right size clothing. She had to wear men's sweatsuits and surf shorts. Too wide, too big, too narrow, nothing fit right. Eventually, Sarah met a circle of surfers who treated her love of surfing with respect and friendship. They became very good friends. Want to surf big waves with us? They asked. Let's do it, she said. One of them was a, was a surfboard shaper. He made boards that were just right for her to surf big waves. She ended up marrying one of those friends. His name is Mike. <laughs> Sarah and Mike moved to California from Hawaii. Near their new home was a famous big wave surf break called Mavericks. Mavericks is known for being big, cold, and intimidating. In the winter, storms in the North Pacific send swells right at Mavericks' crescent-shaped reef, where the contact can create massive waves of 50 feet or more. Mount Everest meets Niagara Falls is one way surfers describe the monster waves at Mavericks. It's a dangerous place to surf, and even expert big wave surfers have made mistakes and lost their lives there. Now, on that cold afternoon in February, it is beautiful and sunny, low tide, waves 25 to 30 feet high. Before today, Sarah has paddled out to Mavericks on her surfboard, but she has not yet caught a wave. Before today, no woman has yet surfed Mavericks. Today is the day. The water is dark and cold and silty. It's a long, tiring paddle out to where the waves break. And Sarah battles her way past the foamy white water. Past Mushroom Rock to the south and Sail Rock to the north. In between them is a gateway to the surf break. Half a mile from shore, she sits up and waits. Then she sees her wave. What a gorgeous, dark, fierce thing it is. The horizon rearing up to greet her. She begins to paddle toward the shore to meet the wave as it arrives. Suddenly, the wave hits the reef and she's looking two, three stories down. Then she stands. The wave continues to grow as she drops in. By the time she surfed part of the way down, the wave pulls her backward a bit, a little closer into its embrace. Then. All of a sudden, it releases her for the thrilling, hair-raising ride down its face. For a split second, Sarah hangs in midair. It's super cold, terrifying, exhilarating. And Sarah can think as she cruises out of the wave is, I want to do that again. And she does again and again. A month later, there is a photographer on the beach watching. He takes her picture. She is Sarah Gearhart, the first woman to surf Mavericks. Sarah Gearhart, the big wave surfer. Oh my God, I got chills. <laughs> I did too. Think about yourself. Oh, that wave. Oh, I did too. I can sit on the couch and think about dropping in and I get, <gasps> Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was so magical. Um, well, so was it weird to read out loud about yourself? <laughs> yeah, it was very weird. <laughs> um, I think all of us need to see um, a photo of Sarah actually surfing Mavericks. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. Um, so you can see what that actually looks like. And that's what it actually looks like. <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, Sarah, do you remember that day in particular? I do. I remember everything about that day. It was, uh, I had attempted to surf Mavericks twice. I'd actually been wanting to surf Mavericks for a year and a half. And I had come to Northern California from San Luis Obispo, where I was going to school at Cal Poly. And I drove around on that beautiful, that beautiful headland that Sophie drew a picture of looking for Mavericks, but I didn't actually know where it was. And so I found my way to a parking lot and then kind of moved around. 
And I started calling people to find out, hey, do you know where Mavericks is? Um, do you have a big board I can use? And um, some people were like, mm, I don't know if I want to take you out there. <laughs> so uh, when, uh, when my husband, Mike, and I moved from Oahu to Santa Cruz for me to go to grad school at UC Santa Cruz, uh, our really good friend, Jay Moriarty, actually took Mike and I surfing Mavericks. And I remember the very first time I encountered it and how much uh, bigger and scarier and uh, powerful it was um, than I had expected. I had been surfing for several years in big waves. And so uh, I was shocked. I was shocked by by it. And then I kind of thought, oh no, I'm not going to be able to surf here. I was, uh, I didn't know if I would have the strength and the focus to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I had attempted it once that very first day in a fall, first swell of the season. And then I attempted it again, but I didn't actually have a board to surf Mavericks that was my own. So I was borrowing boards and they were hard to to paddle. They were for um, men, my husband, who's significantly larger than I am. And then um, a friend of ours, and so I, I actually had my own board shaped and I had, I picked it up in January and it was February and Mike and I were about to go on a, a road trip and he heard the Mavericks was breaking. And we knew that um, the, the reef is more exposed when the, when the tide is out at the shallower um, reef means that you can basically get more, like the wave height can be bigger, even if the swell isn't very big. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, it's breaking, we're going. And I was like, oh no, I'd already <laughs> done a workout early in the morning and maybe I was ready to go. I'm tired. Oh, I'm to tired. Go <laughs> I've already been defeated twice. It's like, all right, we'll go up there. So we went up there. And so I was in Santa Cruz and of course it's near San Francisco. So we drove in the car and um, when we got there, it was so beautiful. You know, those classic late February, um, right, you know, right, 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 right. Just sunny. Yeah. The wind, it wasn't the, the spring winds yet. It was so beautiful. And the tide was really, really low. So the reef was beautiful. And the paddle out, I didn't get completely demolished when I paddled between the two reef breaks, which is awesome. Um, so I had enough energy when I got out there. I was just really enjoying it. And uh, I mean, I just remember the sparkles on the water. You know how when the sun's low and during the winter, um, it's just so sparkly. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Um, that's always just been so magical. And it's really what I feel like this spread that Sophie did is so conjures up that peace and the light on the water. I mean, is this really what you were just like sitting out there and reading? Really? It's exactly like that. And it was. It was before Mavericks was super, super famous, right? Yeah. So it, it was just a few of us. It, Mike, and there were a few people um, that kind of were deeper than I was. I was sitting more on the shoulder, just looking at it because I didn't know the lineup. It's, it, you know, every swell is different. Um, the tides are different. And uh, sometimes you can get pulled into where the waves are breaking. Sometimes you're pushed out of it. Mm -hmm. And so I was just trying to get my bearings. And a person who became a friend of ours, um, this guy Colin Brown, was paddling by and he started talking to me. And I was asking him about the waves and where do I sit? And, and he goes, oh, here's a good one. And that was, <laughs> that was my first wave. And I do, it was, it was, uh, it was really um, shocking to paddle into it and with everything I had, right? I just paddle, put my head down and then to see basically the whole thing just go, Whoa. Right, right. So it grows. I'm not here. <laughs> and it's like, oh, <laughs> you know, the bottom of the ocean just drops out, and it's just like, okay. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, uh, when I was learning to surf, someone gave me really good advice about focusing on the nose of my board. Mm -hmm. Just focus on the first three or four feet in front, right? And that was so helpful because when I was learning to surf, I kept digging my nose into my board or getting overwhelmed or looking around. And um, so I took that advice. I just focused on the nose of my board, that first three, well, actually my board's 10 feet long. So about six <laughs> feet out in front of me. <laughs> and then um, and then felt as soon as it, I was able to be released, I just felt the, 
wow. Yeah. I was just like, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I totally remember. And then just get like, kicking out and just be like, oh my gosh, I want to do that again. Yeah, that was amazing. I remember you telling me that story and that the first thing you were like, I want to do it again. Not like that was terrifying. It was like, let's go, let's go. Um, so I, um, a lot of kids will want to know, you know, what, what do you do when you're afraid of something, but you still want to do it? I mean, yeah. I think you're kind of the perfect person to talk about that. Well, I certainly have experienced uh, that. <laughs> and, um, you know, there, there's a lot you can do, actually, uh, in terms of mental preparation. A lot of the the preparation that I do for anything that I'm scared about is going through the scenario and visualizing completing, mm -hmm. actually walking through and, and finishing. Um, maybe it's a speech I'm going to give because that's scary too, right? right. Uh, or maybe it's something I'm teaching about. I'm like, I'm a teacher and I, I get nervous with that and I just visualize completing it. Mm -hmm. uh, also, there's a lot of physical things you can do to practice, right? I mean, I, in order to serve Mavericks, I was training a lot. So I spent a lot of time underwater. I, I swam in a pool. I did breath hold training. Um, I, I played around with friends. I spent a lot of time in the water. And, and then that helped me mentally to have confidence physically. Mm -hmm. And then physically I had a confidence mentally. Mm -hmm. And they both work together. You have to yeah. have um, both of those aspects. And so what I would say for someone who's scared is um, to, to practice, obviously, and then to mentally visualize. And then uh, I was talking to some friends of mine. So Frosty Hessen, who's a surf coach and who um, the movie Chasing Mavericks is about um, and Jay Moriarty, it's about them. Frosty and then my surfboard shaper, Bob Pearson, helped coach me. And they were helping me about reframing because I was scared, I was nervous. And they were saying, well, if you reframe it and you recognize that maybe you're anxious or scared because you're excited about it, because it's important, that can help um, the mind go, oh yeah, I'm excited. Instead of, oh, I'm really scared, I'm really anxious. And so again, practicing physically, visualization mentally, and then reframing is mm -hmm. those three things have been very helpful for me. This is so helpful. Um, what do you, um, what do you think has changed the most about surfing since you started surfing way back, you know, when you were a kid? Oh, right. Well, I feel like the, the really amazing thing that has changed is that there are more women surfing. And I can go right into hotline wetsuits. I started wearing their wetsuits more than 20 years ago now. Um, I can go right into hotline wetsuits. I can just pick a wetsuit off the shelf and it fits me perfectly. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do any kind of custom stuff. Because mm -hmm. when I first started, I wore men's wetsuits. I'm tall, I'm big, and um, the women's wetsuits didn't fit. And they would be too short or too. I mean, Selby got it just right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Where it's like this huge or like tiny. Thing. Totally. Yeah. And it, the equipment has to fit. And then I feel like that equipment has changed as well. Mm -hmm. There are new materials, yeah. um, there are new eco materials and lighter materials, easier boards to carry. Um, and then um, the only thing I would say that that we're missing here, particularly where I'm living, is the diversity. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see I'm seeing more women in the water, but that's there. I would like to see more people speaking different languages and more people um, just from everywhere, from all walks of life. I would like to see more of that. And it's slowly happening. Yeah. Um, but still, when I when I surf in the morning, I usually go early. There are only a few of us women out there and then it's mostly men so we need to increase that in yeah. diversity yeah yeah for sure i mean i think also when you look at professional surfing and you look at the tour now you see i mean there are lots more faces lots more languages lots more places where people who are you know excelling at surfing are coming from and i think that that is just really 
I mean, it's awesome to see, you know, and I think that's what's partly what's so exciting about the Olympics, you know, surfing being a part of the Olympics for the first time this summer in Tokyo is that you'll get to see exactly what you just said that you wanted to see, right? Like people represented from um, all different parts of the world doing these amazing things um, in the water, you know, I think, and, and doing the sport that you have loved for so long. Um, and also I think of course, when it's on that global stage and on the, on the world stage, um, it, it lends it this air of importance and excitement that, you know, that is like leveling, right? You know, that everyone is receiving it in that same way. Yeah, it's gonna be really exciting. And I just, I just am excited about that global stage because what I'm finding is that when people do come to the ocean and get to experience it through the lens of surfing, they begin to be personally invested in the health of the oceans. And um, I love Save the Waves. They are this group that's really is an international consortium of um, environmental surfing groups, bringing all of these people together for the health of the ocean. And it, it's so important. And I hope that all the people that started surfing through the pandemic, which I've seen them. Yes, you have. We all I hope, have. Right? I mean, that's what we could do, right? We, we could go surfing. I was just going out earlier and earlier and earlier. And then I realized if I'm in sitting in the dark, waiting for the light to, you know, this, just a little bit more light so I can get out there. But it was worth it. I was surfing it in the moonrise. For sure. <laughs> Yeah, like, the full I, moon. Let's try it. That's it's true. It totally works. Um, it, it's just hope. I'm hoping that again with the people coming, they will be able to how will just fall in love, you know, yeah. and then the desire to to take care of it. Yeah, especially the kids. Um, I was asked today um, by a first grader, I think it was, what my favorite ocean animal is. And so uh -huh. I, I should ask you, what is your favorite ocean animal? Because people care oh. about these things. Well, I do too. You know, the dolphins never cease to bring just kind of this sense of wonder and awe. Uh, I've been seeing gray whales breaching close to shore. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, out for a paddle surf and a friend of mine paddled up and said, hey, you've got a friend. I'm like, what? And I looked back and I had a baby otter. So probably about this big oh. was holding onto my leash. <laughs> I never had this happen. I was holding onto my leash and I, I was shocked. So I stood up, I sat up on my board and it grabbed my leash. And it's a really thin leash. I went, ah. <laughs> And then I was scared because I thought, oh no, where's the mama otter? Right. I don't want her to get mad. And, but it was, everything was fine. I just oh, tucked cool. my leash under my belly and then the otter just kept following me the whole time. So I had a friend. Play cool, Sarah. Play cool. <laughs> <laughs> that little baby will just follow me. Oh, I was inspecting. Was it okay? I think you're just sampling like, what is this? It's not quite, yeah, it not quite seaweed. Well, I was going to say, what was your most like magical, like, cool encounter lately but that that that's pretty um that satisfies that that question pretty well that was a shock and it was magical it was so cute um let's see some other questions we had um do you know roughly how big the biggest wave you have ever surfed is well i would say it's somewhere between 40 to 45 feet uh i'm not sure but I've been out on a lot of big waves. So mm -hmm. starting to surf on Oahu, mm -hmm. I surfed Waimea and then I surfed outer reefs. I was the first woman to tow in as well on the Oahu's outer reefs before tow surfing was really a big thing. And then I um, also towed Jaws, which is on Maui, but it was a small day. It was only like 30 feet. So small, um, <laughs> well, small for them. Um, so somewhere in the 40, 45 foot range, I'm not, I'm not sure. It's, it's tough to tell too, because when I'm looking, <clears throat> when I'm looking down, I'm, I'm, you know, like distance, you can't quite tell. And the interesting thing is as I drop in, the wave gets bigger behind. Yeah. And so the wave kind of stands up. And so it's like, it's almost, you're doing this kind of a thing, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and then pictures are hard because yeah it the it goes a little under sea level 
So, so the photographer won't catch the bottom half of the wave or bottom, mm -hmm. not half, but bottom portion of the wave. So honestly, right. you won't know, but yeah. And you've got like <laughs> the steepness and, and just like the angle and the light and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of fun though. You take your, you're like, okay, that board's 10 feet long and you go like this and you're like, oh, okay. That's at least 40 feet. <laughs> um, that I, I trust you. I trust that your approximation. is. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see the, we had some questions about um, your favorite books. Cause we know that you are a professor. And we know that you teach chemistry and this is your job as in addition to being a big wave powerhouse um but you know what are what are the things that you um like to read and 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 what's your favorite part of teaching tell us about that sure well i spent a lot of time as a child very sick unfortunately mm -hmm. uh, i had asthma and i had a, it was so bad i was hospitalized a lot mm -hmm. so i spent a lot of time in bed a lot of time at home and i read a lot of books and I have to say the books that I keep coming back to that from my childhood that I really like are the Narnia Tales from uh -huh. C.S. Lewis. Mm -hmm. I actually just recently reread them. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. They're great. And maybe They're some great. of our, our, our audience um, today will, will start reading them for the first time. That's pretty sweet. Oh, it is. They are such sweet books. And uh yeah, and some of the books that I've enjoyed, I really am enjoying um, like true, you know, nonfiction or memoirs. Mm -hmm. And a book that I really liked about a woman, um, it's a memoir called Lab Girl. And now I'm not- Yeah, Hope Jaren, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Hope, it, it was such a great book. Um, and I, I totally appreciated the story of being in grad school and being a woman in a man's field and the, the encounters and all the crazy adventures. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the beautiful um, positive ending. Mm -hmm. And I actually read some of her research lately about how increased amounts of carbon dioxide are impacting plants. And the interesting thing is you think like, oh no, too much CO2. Well, that's what plants breathe, <laughs> right? So it turns out that plants are going to end up, well, from her research, they have more carbohydrates. And unfortunately, that's not that great because for humans, because if the carbohydrate to protein and fat ratio changes, then that means that we're not getting the nutrition that we need. We'll end up needing to eat more rice or more of the, the plants that are like, you know, more quinoa or something like that and not get as much protein and carbs or protein and lipids. So mm -hmm. interesting, great book. Anyone can read that one. And then um, I, you know, I really um, appreciate Arlene Bloom. Uh, she um, wrote Breaking Trail. Mm -hmm. So I read it many years ago and it's just such an inspiring story about a woman who's a scientist again, who's in a man's field. She was in Berkeley at Berkeley um, studying physical chemistry, which is what I studied for my PhD. And I read this story when I was doing my PhD. So it was very like, okay, I can do this. And she's a mountain climber. And so Breaking Trail is about her story of leading the first all women's team of Annapurna and her story in general. And now she's come back from her hiatus of years and years of, of um, being in the Himalayas. She does the Himalayan um, festival every year in Berkeley mm -hmm. and she started the Green Science Policy Institute. And so she is really, um, really looking out for our health and our well-being, mm -hmm. um, watching chemicals that are coming onto the market, making sure that they're um, not going to cause cancer, do things like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I loved Breaking Trail. Yeah. And I really like the story of the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> that was such a profound story. Cute. Yeah. Oh, and, <laughs> and I, I think I just do it. Do I have my tome of a book here? I just finished reading the gene as well because I'm not a biologist, biochemist. I'm I did do a postdoc in molecular biology. Um, I taught myself all the biology stuff to do that. Um, but I found the gene. Uh, to be a really, really fantastic historical uh, perspective of the gene and genetics and what it is and what people have thought about it and how the role it's played and um, everything that we have. 
So we know well, about. It sounds like your love of the ocean and your appreciation for, you know, I mean, I, and I find, I know that you'll find, you find this to be true as well. Just when you spend all that time um, out there, um, you know, the hope is that you, you appreciate what's behind it, you know, and, and, and science. I mean, you are a scientist, you are a, a science professor. And I feel like it only makes sense that, that our interests are overlapping in these ways where um, you can see the holistic, you know, the whole um, relationship of all of those um, people and creatures and the natural world and um, appreciating, like when you seek joy in that place, you'll want to take care of it and understand how it works too. And that's sort of like, you know, what, what, what we wanted to communicate with this book is like the joy and the thrill of, um, you know, something, something that brings you such joy and thrill and what you will, um, you'll work really hard to overcome all of those challenges to get to do it, you know, and take care of it. So um, I think that that's, I don't know, it's just wonderful to hear you talk about all these things. Um, I would love to, um, Hannah, have uh, um, some audience questions if we might do that. That would be sure. awesome. Sure. Um... I did not, <laughs> I can't see my own video. Am I here for you guys? Uh, I don't think you're here, but we could go into the Q and A. Let me, that's probably just, <laughs> it's probably just because I, I um, highlighted oh, you all, spot, not yeah, myself. Um, that's okay. <laughs> just never, did, this is the first time we've did, did this. That's what I get. <laughs> Let me see if I can do it over here, but um, let's no, I actually would love to see, I think everyone would probably want to see Sophie's um, drawing bigger. Yeah. So maybe we can unpin us. And then oh, okay. See. Yeah, let me just unspotlight. The pressure. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> it looks so, oh, it might be that Sophie it. needs to unshare her screen. Let me, um, because I Sorry. Still... Should I, uh, did you say I should unshare? Yes, isn't that what we wanted everybody back on the screen? Or? Oh no, we wanted to oh, see her picture. Up oh, bigger. I'm yeah. sorry, sorry, <laughs> I misunderstood. I'm all confused, everyone can see the photo. I'm all flustered because I can't see myself. I'm used to staring at myself. Oh yeah, uh, now we see you. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, but you can see the photo? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So um, I see it, we've got some great car. We got the car, her seeing the, the beach. Everyone can enjoy it. And the otter. Um, <laughs> the otter is so cute. But there's so many great things. Um, let me go back through because that did not do what I wanted. And then I'll ask questions. We do have questions. Sorry about the, the pause, everybody. But I just want to make sure that you can see everybody um, who's talking. Um, add spotlight. And then we need Sarah to come back on. Uh, add spotlight. All right, and uh, for some reason I can't see myself, but that's okay, I don't need to look at myself. Um, but we do have some audience questions. Um, and I also had a question um, for Sarah. So, and, um, so people, if you have more questions, our attendees, you feel free to add them in at any time and I'll make sure I'll, I get your, to your questions. Um, so I'm gonna give you some time with my own opening question. Um, and, that is how exactly did you get into surfing? Because I, um, my father was a surfer when he was young. My brother's a surfer out in Galveston, Texas, and um, they are so involved within, with their community and teaching young kids how to surf um, and teaching each other how to surf. So I was just curious about what your experience was um, learning about surfing and getting out there for the first time. Sure. Well, I had been exposed to surfing because um, we had lived on the uh, big island of Hawaii for a long time and I was younger and um, I was also living in this on the central coast. So it was between um, central coast, San Luis Obispo area, and there's just a lot of surf. And um, actually a friend of mine had, we wanted to go to the beach and have some fun. And we just brought this big old surfboard and this giant wetsuit that filled with water. <laughs> it was so funny. Um, and we just went out and played in the waves with this surfboard. We didn't know anyone who actually surfed. And um, I ended up getting hit on the head and I was like, wow, this is so fun. <laughs> um, and I literally, I went home and I told my mom, I want to learn how to surf. And I, I think that it was just really this amazing sense of freedom 
yeah, it was intimidating, but fortunately I had spent so much time in the water that I wasn't scared of getting tossed around. And I just, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the constant waves coming and, the, and focusing on that and just kind of leaving all my troubles on the beach, so to speak. I was just free and it was exhilarating and wonderful. And I just wanted to do it again and again and again. And basically that was the start. And so I got a surfboard and I got a wetsuit and I just kept going out over and over and over again. And I, I just, honestly, I went today, (laughs) right, Bonnie, I'm sure you're like, when can I get in the surf? (laughs) Yeah, It's It's just so fun. And it's, oh, you know, life is, life is, can be challenging. Um, it's can be difficult and it's just wonderful to have a healthy, positive escape, whatever that might be for somebody. Um, I think that we need to take care of ourselves and find that something that moves our body and engages us with nature. And then with the community around us, um, it's so important. It's such uh, a valuable component of my life and I hope just life in general. So kept going. Very nice. Thank you. Um, let's see, we have a question from, I'm just going to go off of, from, um, sorry if I mispronounce your name, but Salia or Sela, um, she, they would like to know what was the process for Bonnie and Sophie to work together on this book? <laughs> That's a great question. This is the first kids book I've ever done. And I had heard from another way more experienced children's author was that that you write a book you write the book and then the illustrator illustrates it and and in my like I think most people thought what I thought which was oh they're definitely working together and they're you know right you know writing the story and then drawing at the same time and that is just not how it works (laughs) so I wrote the story and then um and then our publisher gave it to Sophie um, but I did find Sophie because I love her art and there is um, uh, a wonderful illustrator directory named uh, called Women Who Draw and that's how I found Sophie's work and when my publisher and my editor said you know are there illustrators you really like and I said yes I like Sophie do yeah. <laughs> we have her <laughs> and so um, I mean we're so lucky that um that you had time to do this and wanted to take on the project. So, so you should tell us about what it was like for you to do it. Uh, yeah, on my end, I, I was like being given a gift. Like I was, I can't remember what I was doing that day. I was probably just like at work on my computer. And then I like checked my email and I had this email in my inbox, like with a, with a surprise gift, like Bonnie's manuscript. <laughs> saying do you want to illustrate this manuscript and I was like yes (laughs) but it was just like you know it comes to the illustrator kind of like fully formed as the text and I was just like I love the ocean I love like I I love that it's set in California so close to me because I'm in San Francisco and it was just like uh felt really right um and then when I was working on the book, I um, lo- normally when you're illustrating a book, you don't talk to the author at all because you're just working directly with the publisher. But um, for this book, I just kind of followed Bonnie on social media and I was seeing that she was posting a lot of pictures of herself surfing and like, you know, writing r- articles about the ocean. And then she had just published her book, Why We Swim, which was came at the perfect time because it was just at the start of the pandemic and everyone was like I miss swimming I miss being outside and um it was it was kind of inspiring like I was working the book for um the better part of a year and just following along with Bonnie and seeing her kind of ocean life was like a good like inspiration for me as I was working. This makes me kind of reclaimed listening to this. <laughs> it's so it's so nice to hear it too. Thank you. <laughs> what events like these are for? It's to oh, celebrate. Oh. 
Yes, <laughs> yeah. So exciting. Um, and we have a few more questions. Um, this is for both uh, Sophie and Bonnie. Sophie, um, oh, and it's from Sarah. Sophie, what is your next dream children's book to illustrate? And Bonnie, what children's book to write next? And she said, thank you, this is wonderful. Sophie already has a dream book. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm illustrating a book right now called I Am Golden, which um, some, um, Hannah just put in the, the chat there if you want to check it out. But it's coming out in January and it's about being a dog growing up Chinese American, which is, you know, obviously really cool to illustrate like a book that's really close to my own experience. Um, I was also a really big fan of Narnia when I was a kid. So... I think any magical, fantastical like world would be really fun to illustrate. Um, I, I've been writing my own kids book, which, um, you know, obviously if I can, if I can illustrate that and uh, make that happen, that would be the dream. That's a lot of pressure though, because it's, it's easier when you're partnered with an author and you can be like, we're in this together, but <laughs> when it's all you, it's like, oh, it's funny. Um, yeah, I think um, Aya just asked a question um, in the chat for you, Sophie, of how long have you been drawing? No, I've never not been drawing. So like my entire, my entire life. Yeah, I've pretty much been drawing since I can move my hands. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. What about you, Bonnie? What do you have coming up next? I have a few things cooking um i don't um i don't i'm not quite ready to talk about them yet but i am excited which is what is the feeling that i know that i'm that that's a, something to pursue you know because i'm like super excited to think about it and even when i'm just lying in bed or walking around or doing whatever and i'm thinking about it and 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 chatting with my friends about it, then I know, oh yeah, you know, there's something, there's something there. There's enough there, there to, to you know, make into a book. Um, so that feels good. Good, I'm glad. Um, so Sarah Walters, um, or sorry, that would, that's your last name. Tamara has a question for you, um, and it kind of leads, uh, comes, comes back to what we just asked Bonnie and Sophie, but um, you're going to represent Team USA in the Summer Olympics, right? Is that what I heard? No? Okay, I was going to say, is that what's coming up next for you? Okay, so a little sad face there, but what's <laughs> up for you, Sarah? <laughs> Do you have any, any projects, any, anything that you're focusing on uh, that we can follow along with, or... <laughs> You'll have to check back. I'm raising teenagers right now. <laughs> yeah. Teenagers still it's serving actually, in the full time job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's it's actually really fun. My son is uh, playing bass, and he's in a he's in a surf a skate punk band. He's he's a skater, and he's playing gigs with the Curb Creeps and. Um, my daughter's 14 and exploring and she's loving languages and wants to travel abroad and and so we'll just I just have to survive the next four years and that means I'll be <laughs> surfing as much as possible <laughs> we can't wait to get back into the classroom in person teaching and and yeah and just constantly focusing on just trying to be um, a better human being and working on that all the time <laughs> That's it. Um, well, I have to uh, I have to tell everyone that um, Sarah is a huge inspiration for my kids um, who are eight and ten. And Teddy um, made a Lego of Sarah. It looks just like her. <laughs> and he also had, had made the book trailer for the book. Um, and, you know, uh, it's just really great to um, show them, you know, tell them a story and then say, this is a real person. You know, this is a real person who did real things that are so inspiring. Um, and um, also, you know, that they, that they love books and reading and um, making and creating and, and um, you know, being in the water. Uh, they see all of this together. And I think when we are happy and engaged as the grownups in their lives, 
um, you know, they can't help but also absorb that and to um, reflect that back and say like, this is important. You know, like when Sarah's talking about like, it's important to take care of yourself. It's important to be, um, do the things that you love and bring you joy and also, um, you know, care about the world and care about um, other people. I think that that's, you know, that's pretty exciting and wonderful to see. Hope it rubs off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have another question here um, from uh, Tamara, or Tamara, sorry if I mispronounce it. Um, again, to Sarah, uh, what kind of opportunities has this stardom brought to you? Um, a book has been written, numerous articles, and even a movie. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about some more opportunities that might have come your way in the over the years? Yeah, sure. I think uh, I've always been a bit um, like camera shy. And because of being an outsider in both my field of chemistry and then in surfing, I've, I've always felt a bit like I had an imposter syndrome, like I don't belong. So I felt very like almost embarrassed when um, a photographer was on the beach and sent the, the pictures to Surfer Magazine. And I basically had a message on my phone when I got home saying like, oh, you surf Mavericks, I'm gonna interview you. And I was just like, oh my gosh, what does this mean? You know, this is, this is, I didn't do it because I wanted to be interviewed. <laughs> I just I wanted to be out there. And, um, and so I kind of reluctantly did an interview and then a friend of mine um, for an art project for San Francisco Art Institute. She was um, doing a little mini film projects. Uh, she did one about her friend, Elizabeth Pepin. And then um, she's like, will you do one with me? And I was like, sure, but I don't like being in front of the camera and I don't know. And anyway, it turned out to be this massive long project. It's a full movie now, um, way back in the day. And the very end of it, I'm pregnant with my son. And I thought, okay, well, that's it. I don't even know if I'll ever shift Mavericks again, because, you know, you have kids and then like, what's life going to be like, you know, will I be too scared? Will I, you know, I value my life and I wouldn't want to put it um, in too much harm's way. <laughs> so, but again, I, within a, within a year after he was born, um, I was actually pregnant with my daughter and I didn't know it, um, but my husband was in the Mavericks surf contest. And I paddled, I was in the water all day with him. And then after the contest, I, um, I paddled over and I caught the biggest waves I'd ridden at Mavericks and thought, okay, well, I'm going to keep serving Mavericks. And, and all uh, the, some of the really neat things that have come along um, are the abilities to, or the invitations to speak like Girls Inc. And so fun. I love talking with kids. I've given um, commencement addresses at high schools. I've um, I just did an online um, thing for Ernst and Young um, for for women, and actually hundreds of people all over the world were there, and just really cool, like just to share and encourage and inspire people um, with, you know, what I have discovered and experienced has been a huge blessing. So I think that's probably the biggest. But then I still feel like I don't want to be in front of the camera, and <laughs> I'm like. And I don't have social media because I'm too busy and ah, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, well, you'll just have to um, join Bonnie and Sophie in, on all their events. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> this has been a wonderful conversation. It's not over yet. We still have a couple questions. Um, and I will pose this to both um, Bonnie and Sarah, but I think it was directed towards Sarah. Um, where have you not surfed yet that you'd like to surf? What surf spots are growing in popularity in countries that aren't usually thought of as surf spots? Sure, yeah. You know, I'd really like to surf Toto Santos. Oh, you know, I really want to go is Chile. I want to mm -hmm. go to Chile. I'm thinking for my teaching sabbatical that I'll go maybe go to Santiago and teach, maybe do some outreach for high school chemistry teachers and do outreach there on my sabbatical brush up on my Spanish and then surf the Chilean coastline. I would love to do that. Um, I, I surfed Peru and it was amazing. Uh, yeah. So, and I think surfing kind of blowing up all over the world right now. 
uh, I'm finding people surfing places I've never seen them surf before. So just look out your window. You might see a surfer showing up there anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> So I think that answers that. Wait, on that river, on that lake? Well, also in this, you know, artificial um, surf parks are just blowing up everywhere. Yeah. Um, I've been dying to surf Peru. Oh, I, like God. people have told me just, uh, yeah. So I am nursing two broken ribs oh. right now from a couple weeks ago, falling on my surfboard rail. So I'm <laughs> recovering from that. Uh, but you know, I, as I've been saying, I can now laugh with my whole body and not just my face. So things are working up <laughs> and I, you know, I think that's a good sign. Like now I, I'm like, Peru is like within sight. Sarah, I'll meet you there. Sophie will come too. <laughs> do you do any other, uh, water sports? Me? Yeah, both of you, either of you. Sophie, do you, do you surf or do any water sports to only be out of the conversation? Um, I swim. swim. I, I have attempted to surf two times. I took, I took um, a surfing lesson when I was researching this book. I went down to Half Moon Bay. I didn't surf at Mavericks because <laughs> that was way too much, but I did like a baby surf lesson at like a very easy beginner's beach down there. And um, I love that so much. I, I was, uh, I stood up. I stood up, I surfed a wave, the wave that's in the book where I said I surfed a wave that I'm pretty sure was over one foot tall <laughs> in my bio. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think I'd, I'd like to keep trying, but it's definitely one of those things where I feel so like, I, it's like learning a new language or something. It's like completely foreign to how I'm used to moving my body. And I feel like it's uh, something I'll have to like keep trying again and again. And I love anything water, but I, I do yoga at least once a week. I did yoga this morning, online yoga, and I cannot wait to get back in the studio. It was like chaos with everybody getting ready for school and walking around and some, some people doing school in the living room. I was just like, and I'm in the middle of a posture and my friend <laughs> comes in and I'm like, it's well, not I the same. I'm doing yoga. <laughs> <laughs> not the same. Not the same oh. you do online yoga in your living room when people are eating breakfast around you <laughs> as being in a nice, calm, zen <laughs> Well, I was thinking like, how cool is that? If I can actually zen in the middle of the chaos, isn't that the whole like goal of it? And I can just, yeah in the middle of the chaos right and that's the practice of surfing as well it's just being in the middle right. of being the, the focus and the calm in the middle of all of the yeah right and having that sense of peace is awesome and that lasted for about 30 seconds and i'm like <laughs> i can't wait to get to the studio <laughs> so i i want to ask kind of uh one more question to both um bonnie and sarah about surfing um and just, just from my own experience, because like I said, my family are surfers. Uh, I was not <laughs> because I had fear. Uh, even as a young child, um, I tried to surf and I got you know, stuck under the board and I was like, never again, I never want to do that again. And I was surfing in Galveston, Texas where the waves are not very big and not very scary. They can be, I'm sure, but you know, I was right there with my dad. So I want to ask you about um, like, what, what would your advice be? Not to just the kids who are interested, but the parents who may not be experienced with, with surfing or, and be a little afraid of having their kids out in the ocean. Like, what would you um, say to kind of calm someone's nerves and get kids excited about that? especially since it's becoming more popular and you are parents yourselves. Right. I mean, I think about that with my kids and I think about um, how they have to be good swimmers first. You know, they have to be also not only good swimmers, but um, knowledgeable about the ocean. The ocean is a very specific entity, you know, and it also does things that you don't expect. And so knowing all of the unexpected things that can happen and be looking for them to maybe happen is is like i mean the you know even as a grown up like i to know all of those things is what actually calms me um because i know what what can be out there you know in that respect and and prepare for it 
Yeah, I agree. I agree. Exactly. A solid swimmer, uh, maybe some experience with junior guards. Uh, if you can, there's like a junior guard at the pool and then a junior lifeguard at the beach. Um, and as a parent, I feel like it would be, well, as a parent, it is terrifying to watch my children go. It's like my heart walking outside of my body. <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> um, but I want to, I want to encourage my children if they love something, um, to pursue what they love and to not let my fear get in the way of what they want to pursue. That's very difficult. Um, particularly like if I didn't know how to swim or I didn't know, um, the, about the ocean, my child wanted to be in there, you know, I might do something like sign them up with a surf school. There's so many great surf schools out there now. Um, so there's opportunities that way. And again, through maybe a junior to lifeguard program. Uh, and also there's so many neat YouTube videos now, right? So you can at least learn about rip currents and you can learn about the tides and you can learn about what causes waves and what to look out for. I think that'd be, you know, get a lot of learning on there. And then um, if you don't know how to swim as a parent, get your water wings on <laughs> and go out there. <laughs> learn how to do it i love that sophie's drawing a baby i thought maybe she was gonna draw a whirlpool <laughs> what, is like a baby? what are you gonna grab on this one on this little question uh, well it really has been a joy listening to you talk hearing you read the book um seeing sophie draw while we chat um while the two of you chat um and like bonnie said at the beginning um Everybody who um, purchased a book through Eventbrite will get one of these cards with their book. So um, Bonnie will be will be signing them at our Berkeley location soon. Um, if you haven't purchased a book yet, um, you can do so with our special event coupon code. It's books books Inc events one word, and I'll send it in, in an email too. Um, and it's valid for the next week, and it'll get you the fifteen percent off um, event. Um, discount that we have on Eventbrite. And if we have enough of these cards, I'll sneak one in there for you myself if you purchase with that coupon code. Um, and we are so excited to be able to offer you signed copies. Um, it's one of the benefits of being being um, Bonnie and Sophie, both of you, at local, uh, local bookstore. So um, thank you so much for tonight. Um, is there any last words that you, you three want to say before before we sign off. I want to say thank you. This has been such a joy. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a wonderful, you. yeah, wonderful conversation. So um, you've got lots of love going in the chat. Um, thank you so much for your questions, everyone tonight and for coming. Um, Bonnie, I hope you had fun with the kids today. <laughs> I, I did. I, did. I, heard, I saw one of the librarians was on here again, seeing you again. So yeah. um, thank you so much for um, continuing to support Books Inc. and for choosing us as your launch event. And I look forward to seeing you again in the future, maybe in person at a story time. Um, Sarah, if you come up, let us know. <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking of coming up to San Francisco this weekend to see yeah. Tamara. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lunch, anybody? <laughs> Not? Well, and send it to Bonnie. She can put it on social media for you. <laughs> right. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you, everyone. We hope you have a wonderful night. Um, and keep an eye out for an email with all the, the goodies in there. Um, and I will see you all soon. And to our authors, illustrator, and Sarah, our, our topic, Bonnie, Sophie, Sarah, thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. <laughs>